Section number eight of Favorite Fairy Tales Retold. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Favorite Fairy Tales Retold by Julia Darrow Cowles. The Enchanted Mead, a Korean folk tale. Once upon a time, there was an old woman lived upon a river bank where the ferry boats crossed. She was poor and often had only a bowl of rice for her dinner. She had no family, unless one may call a faithful dog and a mischievous cat a family. But dog Trophy, Thomas the Cat, and the old woman lived very happily and were the best of friends. It was only now and then that they went hungry to bed. One day a stranger stopped at the old woman's cottage. I am weary and thirsty, he said. Can you give me refreshment? Now the old woman had only a bit of bread and one last sup of mead, but seeing the stranger's weariness, she offered them heartily. Thank you, said the stranger, when he had finished. I cannot offer you money, but if you will drop this bit of amber into your jug, you will never find it empty of mead. And handing the old woman a clear yellow stone, he disappeared. Wondering and curious, the old woman dropped a bit of amber into the jug. At once the jug felt heavy, for it was full of mead. The old woman was delighted, and so plainly did she show her joy, that Dog Trophy and Thomas the Cat seemed to understand her good fortune, and capered about to express their pleasure. Now good times came to the little cottage, for, since the jug was always full, yet required no filling, the old woman set up a little shop where travelers, crossing the ferry, could stop for a bit of bread and a sup of mead. The cat and the dog often talked things over at night, and they understood about the magic bit of amber, for not once had they gone to bed supperless, since the stranger had left the curious stone. The jug was always guarded by one of the three. But one day the old woman took up the jug, and it was empty. She shook it. No merry stone tinkled against its side. Then the old woman knew that in pouring the mead for a customer, the bit of amber must have been poured out too. But into whose cup or jug it had gone, she had not the least idea. She was filled with despair. I have no other means of support, she said sadly. Must I go hungry again in my old age? Dog Trophy's lively expression changed to one of deep woe, and his tail dropped dejectedly. Thomas the Cat lost his usually cheerful grin, and lashed his sides with a bristling tail. At night, as usual, they talked matters over. I know, said Thomas, that I could find the bit of stone by the smell, if I could get somewhere near it. But how is one to begin? We will set out, said Dog Trophy, and visit every house in the neighborhood. Let us start at once while our old mistress sleeps. Ready, said Thomas, and off they went. They visited every house on that side of the river, but not once did Thomas get a whiff of the precious amber. The river is frozen, said Trophy at length. Let us cross to the other side. We have spent many nights in searching, but we must not give up yet. So together they crossed the river, for the ice was firm, and began their search on the farther side. Dog Trophy made the acquaintance of all the dogs, while Thomas went inside and called upon the house cats. One night, 
as he was walking stealthily along a beam in one of the houses he caught a sniff of the longed-for odor it told him that the stone was near and he was so delighted that he almost lost his hold upon the beam but it was well that he did not for he would have fallen straight upon the bald head of the man who owned the house he regained his balance and followed the scent which grew stronger and stronger the farther he went at last he came to a heavy box the cover of which was fitted so closely that he could not move it try as he would the cover could not be raised so thomas went outside to consult with dog trophy the box cannot be moved and the lid cannot be lifted said thomas but i am sure the stone is inside there is but one thing to do then said dog trophy who was very wise and what is that asked thomas respectfully get the mice to gnaw a hole in the box said trophy at that thomas grinned and how will we win a favor from the mice we who chase and eat them on every occasion let us sign an agreement not to touch a rat or a mouse for a whole year said trophy and that is what they did though they had some trouble in getting a hearing with the mice but it was a very good bargain the mice admitted and so a hole was gnawed in the box and a very small mouse squeezed through and brought out the bit of amber how dog trophy and thomas the cat rejoiced and how glad their mistress would be they hurried down to the river bank but when they reached the river they saw that the ice was gone spring had come while they were carrying on their search there was no way for them to get back except to swim but thomas of course could not swim but dog trophy was never at a loss for a plan get on my back he said and hold that bit of amber in your mouth whatever happens do not lose the amber i will carry you safe across with that he plunged into the water while thomas clung fast to his long hair thomas wanted to laugh at this new way of riding but he dared not for fear he might lose the stone they were almost across when a sudden splash of water flew straight into thomas's face he sneezed when down dropped the precious stone into the river trophy saw it go and dived for it and such a wetting as thomas got but the stone had disappeared thomas got to the bank somehow and ran up a tree to dry his fur then he arched his back and spit at dog trophy for giving him such a ducking while dog trophy barked furiously up the tree at thomas for losing the precious stone when he had barked his throat quite raw dog trophy went sadly down to the river bank a man was standing near fishing presently the fisherman drew out a large fish and thoughtlessly threw it upon the bank a familiar scent greeted dog trophy's nostrils and instantly he caught up the fish and dashed away with it to his mistress the old woman was glad indeed to see her faithful dog and glad also of a good meal of fish but when she opened the fish to dress it what do you suppose she found her precious bit of amber lay in the stomach of the fish there was happiness and plenty in the little cottage once more but dog trophy and thomas the cat have never been good friends since end of section eight recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida